Okay, now returning to the tribulation application here. So look at this. If verse 10 and 11, we know this is talking about the tribulation saints. So how did they, how were they able to overcome the devil? By the blood of the lamb, word of their testimony. Now this is the problem. There are people who attack dispensational salvations here. Remember, what is dispensationalism? I can't draw a chart anywhere here, okay. So I'll just uh, put it over here, okay. Dispensational salvations, what that teaches throughout different time ages, different dispensations, there were different salvations. And that is pretty obvious. Why? Because, I'm not going to go through this, but I would recommend for onliners to watch Amazing Dispensational Truth from Genesis to Revelation. Please watch that and then it will be very eye-opening for you. But long story short, this is evidence, this verse is evidence that tribulation salvation is obviously different from Christian salvation. You might say, why? Because in the tribulation, they, they've got to give up their lives for Jesus. They got to be willing to lay down their lives for Jesus Christ by resisting the mark of the beast. Now, how many of you are saved Christians, but you're at that point in your life where you're like, I'm willing to die for Jesus Christ. I'm willing to be tortured and starved. Some of us are, which is great, but let's be honest, not everyone is. And some people in the church who are not ready to do so, are you going to say, oh, you're not really saved? Obviously not. We're saved by what? When you have that repentant heart as a sinner, you just trust in what Jesus did for you on the cross. That's it. Not like, I'm willing to lay down my life for you, Jesus, and Jesus says, okay, you're saved. No, that's not it. Did you see Simon Peter? I'm willing to lay down my life for you, Jesus. And God didn't call that salvation. So you got to realize this is that um, tribulation salvation is obviously different then. Because look at this, the blood of the lamb and word of testimony is in context of what? Keep reading. And they love not their lives unto the what? Death. See that? When they have this as their salvation, it is where they're, you're laying down your life. Now, obviously, that is not salvation by faith alone without works. No, it is not. Obviously, it takes a lot of work on your part where you have to go through torture, pain, persecution, and resist the temptation of denying Jesus Resist the temptation of following the devil's system. Did you read the Roman Catholic Inquisition? How bad the torture devices were? Didn't you know there were saved Christians who couldn't help the torture? The torture was so unbearable that they signed uh, the contracts and forms by the inquisitors that they're willing to deny their faith. See, what are you going to say? Oh, they weren't really saved to begin with? Come on, you can't do it that way. That's obviously a lot of work. There's no doubt salvation has to be different here at the tribulation then. Not only that, it says blood of the lamb and what? Word of testimony. Hey, how many saved Christians have bad testimonies? Come on, let's be honest right here. See, how do you get a good testimony? It's by how you live, how your works are for Jesus Christ. So this is evident that salvation in the tribulation is much different from salvation in the Christian church age. All right, now let's look at verse 12. You ready for the interesting one? Ooh, this is interesting. <laughs> Therefore rejoice ye, what? Heavens. Heavens. Ah, did you see that right there? Ah, so notice right here, there's rejoicing not in just one heaven. It's heavens. That is evident then that the dragon is not just kicked out of the third heaven, but the second heaven where the stars are at. Why? Because he's on the earth. See that? So that's why you have to argue three heavens. And where the second heaven is where the stars are undoubtedly located. You have to argue that way. Um, let's keep reading over here. But the heavens rejoice, right? And ye that what? Now, isn't that interesting? There are people who dwell not just the third heaven, but the what? Second heaven. 
Isn't that interesting? Yeah, that's why those aliens, you know, in outer space could be more true than you think. So you ponder on that one for a while, you know. So let's look at this one. Ye that dwell in them. Now let me show you something even more interesting. You ready? Woe to the inhabitants, people who live of the earth, people who live on earth and of the what? Are people or inhabitants who what? Live in the sea too. So not just up there where the universe is, but even below where the deeps are, the waters are. Oh, remember your pastor kept saying this a few times and then some people will say, you're just nuts, you know? So UFOs, your pastor taught this, is that these UFOs, they do not mostly come from above. They come from where? Below, right from the deeps over there. But why do you find them mostly above? Because they're flying over there. They're flying over there. They sometimes make residences over there too, up there in space. So this makes so much sense about dwelling where? Up here and down here. Woe to them. Why? Woe to them because for the devil is come down unto you. See, he's coming down where the earth is. Having what? Great wrath. See, he's angry because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. See, three and a half years is not a long time. So when the devil comes down, he knows he has a short period of time where he can get all the people down there. So he's going to deceive the whole world, get as many people to hell as possible. All right, now, um, that's why when you read some of these stories and mythologies about uh, Atlantis or, you know, the sci-fi show Star Trek and all that, you'd be surprised that, yeah, a lot of it is fiction, but, you know, you'd be surprised an element of truth that's behind them. Yeah, think about that, all right? Anyways, let's look at verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, so Satan, remember, now he's on the earth now. He's cast in there. He persecuted the who? Woman. woman. See, Jews are left behind down here. See that? The woman which brought forth the man child. See that? So it, there is no doubt. Again, this proves Jews have to go through the tribulation, whereas the church has to be out of the tribulation. All right, keep reading. And to the woman, see Israel, were given what? Two wings of a great eagle. So look at this. So this woman was able to fly. Look at this. That she might what? Fly into the wilderness into her place. So notice right here, the Jews are given what it says, two wings of an eagle where she can fly to the wilderness. Now, if you are to think, uh, if you are to think about today, how can the Jews uh, what is the natural thing that you think Jews will do to run away from the Antichrist? They're going to take a flight out of there. Order the first airplane ticket and fly out of there. So let's look at Matthew. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Well, what is, why doesn't it say a flight Boeing 737, etc.? Well, if it gave that exact flight number, then it would scare all the people, especially those who study the conspiracy behind that, that flight. But aside from joking aside, the point is this, because you got to realize, hey, dummy, no one in the first century knew what an airplane was. Okay? If you mention the flight number and then the engines and all that, people will look at you like you're crazy during that time. So that's why God had to give a language for the people of that timeline. All right, let's look at Matthew 24. Look, verse 20. Uh, look at verse 19. And woe unto them that are with child. Kind of similar with the woman with child, right? At Revelation 12. And to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your what? Fly. See that? So notice right here, your King James Bible is way ahead Amen. and is prophetic and scientific about this is the kind of technology they're going to have and it's possible how about that flight be not in the winter so notice right here that these Jews that they're gonna take an airplane and get the first flight out of there but look at something which is interesting here what does the Bible say in verse 20 pray that your flight be not in the winter neither on the what Sabbath, Sabbath day now isn't that interesting 
Why did it say, pray that you don't fly on the Sabbath? Unless they're what? Jews. This proves undoubtedly the woman is Israel, the Jews, because Jews observe the Sabbath system. Now, I don't know if they still continue this, but uh, I've heard it was practiced back then that uh, flights don't go out during the weekend on the Sabbath day for the Jews. So I don't know if that's still practiced today, though. However, see, so that shows right here that, so pray that it's not on the what? On the Sabbath. Yeah, especially, remember, the Jews are reinstating their temple and sacrifice. Yeah. Obviously, they're going to reinstate the Sabbath. So imagine this chaos when the Antichrist marches in. And all these Jews, man, they're flooding the terminals. And then, then the pilots, the people working at the airline say, I can't, I can't. We're closed on the Sabbath. All flights are closed on the Sabbath. And then the Antichrist is flying over while the Jews are panicking. He's coming! He's coming! Get us out of here! Remember, the dragon has come down, and the Bible says he's got great wrath coming. Man. All right, let's go back. Revelation. Revelation. Chapter 12. Notice right here... Uh, Verse 14, we, we know the middle of verse 14. She's given the flight so that she can go to the wilderness into her place. Where she is nourished, right? She's fed with manna. For how long? A time and what? Times and what? Half a time from the face of the serpent away from the dragon. Wait a minute. Could this be similar with three and a half years? Let's take this down. A time, one year, and times two years, see, though that's three years, and what? Half a time, half a year, three and a half years. See, that's why we say three and a half years. Why? Because all the other wordings in the Bible is going to match to that number. Whether it's 1,260 days, 42 months, a time, times, and half a time, you're going to find all over that it's going to fit three and a half, three and a half, three and a half, everywhere throughout the Bible. So that's why we say three and a half years. Okay, um, one thing that I kind of missed out that I want to go back to, you'll notice that at verse 12, that Satan, when he's come down on the earth, he comes down with what? Great wrath, correct? So here's an argument that is used by post-tribbers. Now remember, post-tribbers are people who believe that the church will go through the tribulation, right? So post-tribbers, how they argue is this. Post-tribbers, they teach that when we argue that the tribulation consists of God's wrath, they're going to argue that, well, the wrath that's referring to is only Satan's wrath, not the wrath of God. Okay, so remember, we argue that the Christian church is not going to go through the tribulation because they're avoiding God's wrath, correct? So I'm not going to explain that again. I've explained that in my previous Revelation studies. Post-tribbers, uh, they believe that if we're going to point out a verse, that notice right here they're going through the wrath, they're going to say, well, it's not God's wrath, though. And then you're going to say, well, then what wrath is this? And they'll say, it's Satan's wrath. So they will use Revelation 12 to prove it. Now, the symbol, now it's pretty easy to debunk. You might say, really? Yeah, it's more easy to debunk than you think because um, all you have to do is look back at Revelation chapter 6. That's probably the easiest. Revelation 6. When you look at Revelation chapter 6, remember, we see the seals opened. You see the seals opened at verse 2, verse 4, verse 5, uh, verse uh, 8. So death, hell, famine, the Antichrist coming out, and war. Revelation chapter 5. And notice he opens the book at verse 1. And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with what? Okay, remember Revelation 6 is opening those seals of the Antichrist, famine, death, and hell. So we already read that before, right? But you're going to notice right over here, as you continue reading, uh, let's see right here, la, 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 verse 5, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath, prepared, uh, hath prevailed to open the book 
and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. So this is the lamb that's opening up the seals, correct? So you can't just say this is Satan's wrath. No, this is actually referring to God's wrath throughout the whole tribulation timeline. You just have an addition to that. You know what the addition is? You got Satan's wrath as well. And you, you're mad enough to go through the tribulation, really? All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12. So that's why we realize over here that this doctrine of the church going through the tribulation, it is anti-dispensationalism. It robs you of God's promise that he gave to you, that you'd be raptured, you'd be up with him in heaven, but who'd want to rob your blessing? Who'd want to rob your promise? Satan always does that. The Holy Spirit is known as the comforter, right? That's his job. If you look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the rapture is what? Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Who wants to ruin the job of the Holy Spirit comforting? That's the devil. So that's why you got to realize this doctrine about the church going through the tribulation is something that Satan wants to promote. That's right. All right, let's go to the book of Revelation. Whoa. All right, so let's look at the book of Revelation again. And then uh, can somebody help me with this one? I can't do it from the bottom here while I'm teaching. All right. Thank you, sir. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 12, and we'll read verse 15. Verse 15. All right. Maybe we can finish the chapter, all right? Let's, let's, let's do this, all right? Let's squeeze this in. And the serpent, remember the dragon, cast out of his mouth what? Water as a flood. So notice that this Leviathan is the, remember Isaiah 27? Dragon in the where? Sea. So because of that, he's able to pour out water out of his mouth. That's something right over here. So the dragon pours out water out of his mouth. Why? Because with these waters, he wants to attack. He wants to attack Israel over here. As he pours out the water over his mouth, notice over here, as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. He wants to carry Israel away with the flood. Now think about this. Think about it if you believe in the doctrine of Genesis 6 and the Genesis gap. Well, how did God judge Lucifer and the fallen angels? A flood. How ironic. Satan can't do that to God. So the closest people he can do that against God's face is his people. Wow. See, the, the, the doctrines may be more important than you think. Or it can become significant. Okay, anyways, uh, keep reading over here. So he's uh, carried away of the flood. This flood is literal. Look at Jeremiah chapter 47. Jeremiah chapter 47, verse 2. Jeremiah chapter 47, verse 2. First rule of interpretation is unless it's impossible, unless it's impossible to make it literal, then you can make it metaphorical. If it's not impossible, then the first rule is to take it literally as it says, correct? Mm -hmm. Is it possible that Satan can pour out flood out of his mouth, especially since he's Leviathan, dragon that is in the sea? Of course that's possible. But for scholars, this seems to be too hard for them to understand. So when they, meta they, meta they make the flood metaphorical and refer to that as a prevailing army and etc. Now look at the book of Jeremiah, chapter 47, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, waters rise up out of the north, and shall be an overflowing flood, and shall overflow the land, and all that is therein, the city and them that dwell therein. Then the men shall cry, and all the inhabitants of the land shall howl. So notice right here that the Lord raises up one day at the future timeline of the tribulation a flood that comes out. All right, uh, let's also look at another passage. We're going to look at Daniel 9, 26. Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. Now notice over here that it shows again Satan causing the flood to come out to drown the Jews. So look at Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, 
but not for himself. So this is speaking about Jesus Christ. Now look at this. And the people of the who? Prince. This is switching. This is not referring to Jesus. This is referring to Satan. Why? Because look at this. The people of the prince that shall come shall what? Destroy the city and the sanctuary. Remember the Antichrist army at Revelation 11? Gentiles ruining the temple and the sanctuary, right? Remember the context of Matthew 24? Abomination of desolation. Remember the Antichrist has to persecute the Jews? See, this all matches up. But keep reading over here. And the end thereof shall be with the what? Flood. See that? That's speaking about Satan. See that? That's happening at the future. That's happening at the future. All right, let's go back. Let's go back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. So this is literally going to happen. Literally going to happen. All right, now let's finish off the chapter. I'm going to finish this off. Verse 16, the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth. What does that mean? It means what it says. The earth helped Israel, that what? The earth opened her mouth, so the, open, the earth opens up the mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So when the dragon spit, spewed out this flood, the earth helped out the Jews by opening up the ground so that the flood can go inside the ground, so that the flood doesn't have to drown out the woman. Verse 17, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. Yeah, no kidding. Satan has a lot of wrath against Israel. Remember verse 12, Satan comes down in great wrath, right? And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Okay, look at the wording here. This is why it's very important. War, Satan is battling the Jews, right? Went to make war with the who? Remnant, remnant of her seed. Remnant means survivors, leftover of her people. Why? Because the Antichrist was slaughtering Jews left and right. So there's a remnant that's left over. Now look at this. That's why we know Revelation 12, 11, word of testimony, blood of lamb is correctly defined as, fa uh, excuse me, right over here as works and right over here as faith. Tribulation, as I mentioned to you before, is a faith and work system, a salvation that is different from the church age where it is faith alone, not by works. Now, Revelation 12, 11, look at this. Remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You see that? You see works are involved over here. There's keeping the uh, commandments of uh, involved over here. You could probably argue that, um, well, you know, because I am saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, I have the testimony of Jesus Christ in me. Sure, you can argue like that as a saved Christian by faith, but what are you going to do with which keep the commandments of God? Yeah. See that? So there's no doubt that this is defined right over here, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, that you cannot escape a work system over here. Amen. You might say, why is that? Because these are Jews Jews are supposed to what? Keep the commandments. Law of Moses. So this makes so much sense. Praise God. We finished chapter 12. Okay. We'll, we'll do chapter 13 next revelation. Sorry. But revelation 13 is probably going to be really fascinating. The mark of the beast, the rise of the Antichrist, and a lot of things that you'll be very interested in. Stay tuned. All right. See you at church next week.